and it's not about the money. Then we had a, a guy who wrote a book that said it's not about the money, and they objected to that coming. Anyway, it was right fun. The trial went on for about two and a half months, off and on. And then they left it up to me to make the decisions. And here were the, the, the critical pieces. The Supreme Court had answered it, but they didn't answer it specifically. Who in the hell is, in, is responsible? Who is responsible? This is a constitutional right. This isn't a court-created right. The, the founders of our Constitution, 1868, wrote it in there after the Civil War. The right to an education. It's defined. It's an equal opportunity to have those things, to get that basic stuff. It's not about the money. But the state of North Carolina, believe it or not, with your education governor, Mike Easley, took the position through the Attorney General's office that the state was not responsible, that Hope County, if they couldn't spend their money right and their children weren't learning, then it was their fault, but the state had no responsibility whatsoever once it passed the money down, the ADM money down and the special money down, they didn't have any responsibility to see that the children got educated. And I said, basically, the hell with that. The state has got to be responsible because it's under our Constitution. Number two, what is the measure of a sound basic education? How do we know when a child is obtaining a sound basic education under our ABC system? And you all know what level one, two, three, and four is. I don't need to tell you that. But can you believe this? The state of North Carolina, through its attorney general, argued to me with a straight face that level two, that is below grade level performance, not being able to obtain success in the next year was a sound basic education. You were getting a sound basic education level two. And to that I said, this is North Carolina, the hell with you. This is, we're going to have a good standard and it's going to be a minimum of three. Now you may not like, you may think it's too easy or you may think it's too hard, but we're going to measure success at any point in a child's career in school if they are level three and hopefully level four. So I had to make that finding as a matter of law. They didn't like that. They pouted about that one. Third, and most importantly is, all this, y'all remember the Green Book? You know, they did away with it. They put it online. They did that because they didn't want me to find it. <laughs> but because the Green Book, I found the Green Books and realized I had every test score for every district in the state of North Carolina at my fingertips. So I said, everybody said, Hope County is terrible, and that was true but I had to compare it to somebody else. Then they said, we don't have enough money. We don't, our, our supplement for teachers is $220 a month, and Wake County's supplement is $4,000, and Charlotte Mecklenburg, the, the Queen City, the Emerald Jewel of the North Carolina, banking capital of the world, uh, <laughs> they, they get $6,000. So if money mattered, folks, this is when I, the rubber hit the road with me. I started saying if money matters, if, if what these whiners about money are saying, money, 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 then Charlotte Mecklenburg, for example, is spending $38,000 per class of 26 students. Hope County is spending $15,000 per class of 26 students. So if it's money, then everybody in Charlotte Mecklenburg should be on level three and four. Because if money matters, Charlotte Mecklenburg is the crown jewel. So I got the green book out, and what I found in Charlotte Mecklenburg, it was that was not true at all. They were tanking it. There were more children in Charlotte Mecklenburg who were below grade level in reading and math in, 19, in 2001 in that green book than there were in all of Hope County times three. So I began looking at, I looked at 22 counties and what you found was the, the level of grades in reading and math, especially in the elementary school, were bad all over. Charlotte Mecklenburg, the, the, the black kids 
had tons were not performing correctly. But an equal number of white children were not performing at grade level. So it's not money. I said, to heck with this. It's not money. It's teacher quality. And people don't like the news observer, uh, depending on what they do to you on any particular day. But back then, they came along with something out of the blue, which got my attention. They did a series on good principles. And they picked, uh, bless her heart, she's, I'll never forget her, she wore a red dress. Uh, <laughs> Aunt, Aunt Edge from Nash County who had an elementary school in the middle of a housing project. 100% black kids, all poor, right out of a housing project. And back in 2000, and she had a 72% composite. That's something else. Then there was Lucy Johnson from Northampton, who was a middle school principal, and she had a 73% composite. And then there was a lady from Cary who had a 92% composite, which nobody ever heard of back then. So I said, you know, it's got to be, let's, let's have quality. So we brought those people into court, and they said what they did. Each one of them did it differently. Ms. Johnson's folks worked on Saturday. She let them go to the hairdresser any time they wanted to because they were working six and a half days a week to get these children up. And Ann Edge, she had a great faculty. She, the, te the teachers would come to her and they'd never leave because they were committed, committed to seeing that those little children who had nothing, zero, were gonna learn how to read and do math, and they did. So when we got to the end of the, the case, and I won't get into the pre-K issue because we haven't got time. Pre-K is important because these are the children that can't get to the door in kindergarten because they're not ready for kindergarten. So I had ruled that the state had to give them pre-K. Wrong. But anyway, we'll go. That's, that got straightened out. Thanks to Mort Four. But in the long, in the long run, what happened is it all boiled down to quality, in my view. It wasn't money. It was what's going on in the classroom. So I said three things in my decision, which went on for too many pages, and there were four of them. But when we got to the end, the state's responsible, not the local school board. Level three and four are evidence that you're getting a sound basic education in whatever subject you take. And last but not least, these are what are called Leandro compliant requirements. That you have to have a certified, competent principal in every school who knows what they can do it any way they want to, but it's their particular drive in education in that school is successful. Every classroom has a competent, certified teacher who's gonna differentiate instruction assess the students like you're supposed to assess them, which is not every six weeks, but every week, you should know where your children are. And uh, three, you had to have the resources in the school to support that program. And so when we got to the end, that was basically what I ruled. And the Supreme Court affirmed that in Leandro too. What they did, they got mad at me because I had ordered the state to give pre-K to at-risk four-year-olds. And they said, we agree with you. They need, the, the four-year-olds need this help before they get to kindergarten so they can have an equal opportunity to get started along with everybody else. But you can't tell the state what they have to do at this point. It's premature. So as Burley always tells me, initially at least is the term. If they're not, if the state's not doing what they're supposed to do, and I found a constitutional violation, statewide there was children not, especially in Hope County, who were being deprived, not having the equal opportunity. It's up to them to fix it. Now, if they don't fix it, then the courts have to reluctantly come in, and then we are authorized to set out a specific remedy. But it's not, as people just don't understand about the lawsuit, today. 
They can't, I don't have a magic wand and I can't go wave it and give everybody the money they want because that's not the court's function. But we, if you identify a de constitutional deprivation, then you say to the executive branch and legislative branch, folks, you've got to fix it. And generally, they fix it. If they don't fix it, then the court has to step in as a final, you know, and that's not a pleasant thing to do, and say, you've got to do this.